All right, so we're rolling. So uh, what brings you to Omegle tonight? I just want to see some pussy, man. <laughs> God. Okay, dude, that's awesome. That's great. So what um so like what are your opinions, your thoughts of what's going on in the world today? I don't know. What what do you care about? Um uh I mean I, I think I, I think the cap the stuff that happened at the Capitol, I mean that looks like a that looks like it'll make a really good uh, Call of Duty video game. Oh my gosh, like a uh, it, an interesting. You ever heard of Call of Duty? Right? Pretty good. Wow. So yeah, what are your thought? What are your thoughts of of that whole thing? Like what? Like uh, actually, when when it comes down to it, like how does that thing make you feel? Like is it? Uh, like, is it, are you not really interested in it? Does it anger you? Does it excite you? Like, what do you think? Um, no, it definitely scares me because I don't want to live in a COD video game. But I'm also excited for the next, I'm also excited for the next COD, you know? <laughs> yeah. That's going to look like it belongs in Fortnite. Dude, I, I, I am a big fan of COD. Um, are you, do you play? <laughs> No. Oh. Yeah, I, I... I I just I just like watching people play. Yeah, I... It's true. Like, it's fun to play, but I don't want to live in the COD world. Definitely. Most definitely, yeah. Yeah. That, that, that doesn't make... No. That, that's reserved for the Middle East. So... <laughs> that's a dark joke. That's good. Yeah. Well, it's also... Yeah. It's, so, like... When, yeah. um, I don't know. You um. Yeah. Yours. Oh what? Oh, is there someone? No, never mind. Never mind. Never mind. Yeah. So um, I guess for you, like, what are some things that uh, you care about that you that you think that people should um know about, or people things that you think people should have on their minds these days? I don't know. Where where do you want to put your kind of spotlight? You know what I mean? Um, well, if you're, I, okay, so I'm, I'm going to get serious here for a second and then I'll return back to the jokes. All right. No, all right. okay, okay. no, no, no. This is all about okay. what you want to do, dude. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. So I like, I thoroughly believe in the democratic process. Right. Right. So like when there's like a group of people or like a person in government that is actively going against that democratic process. It's it's kind of incredulous to me that he has the the highest position in I guess the free world, even though America kind of made that term up, right? But I don't know, like if if you if you're out there and you're like for these people, these people think that what they're doing is the right thing. They they have been like brainwashed to an extent where they think that what they're doing is the natural progression. And if I was in that pipeline, right, if I was thinking about it like that, I would think, yeah, that's the right thing. There, I'm thinking there's enemies all around me. There's a um, uh, c- catastrophe happening. We got, we got damn immigrants coming in from outside of the country, you know what I mean? <laughs> and this shit happens, and you're like, like from their like perspective, maybe they're just not educated enough for some shit, right? But like... This the shit happens, and they're like, "Oh, the only way I can like change this is by like actively rebelling." And I was like seeing like people like in the house calling like comparing themselves into like like revolutionaries, like comparing themselves to, like George Washington over like the Delaware and shit. And that's that's not really how I look at this. Yeah, yeah. So but- yeah, but it also looks like Fortnite. Yeah, well, no, dude, I mean, you, yeah, well, first of all, I just have to compliment you on your, how articulate you are and how clear your thoughts are of this. Um, like, it's pretty imp- impressive but to let you know, like, I've, I've talked to a bunch of people on here and, and you have a very clear idea of what you value, what you prioritize. And that's, that's badass, truly. I, I've just been watching a bunch of news, man. <laughs> 
Now, do you, do you, <laughs> do you, do you study this stuff or are you in school or like, what's your story? Uh, I, I just, I enjoy, okay, look at this, these last couple of weeks, I've just been watching the stuff and like, I just got really interested into it. I don't know. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, what are like, uh, I just grow. what is that? I just grill. <laughs> you, you know the thing? Like, nah, yeah, dude, I, yeah, I, I do not, I'm an old man. <laughs> I'm an old man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So there's there's this thing where like people are like, oh, uh, you ask them, are you political? And they say, you know, man, I don't want to talk about politics. Let me grill. <laughs> right? They want to go outside. They just want to go out just, and grill. Uh, Okay. Uh, yeah. They don't want to be. Well, dude, okay. well, it's 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 crazy. I mean, like I bring this up sometimes. Like seventy four million people voted for Trump, eighty one million people voted for Biden, but like eighty five million people didn't vote who were of age to vote. So eighty five million people mm. are just grilling. You know what I mean? Like as as we're talking. Mm. That, mm. So that's more yeah. pe more people are doing that than are, are voting for a particular candidate, which is crazy to me. I think people just feel like mm. lost. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people, and you can chalk that up to, people have been talking about how in like cities and stuff, it was hard for people to get out to vote, right? Some people didn't register in time, and they just, yeah, the corona and stuff, like they just didn't, either they didn't have the information because it wasn't out for them readily available, and since so many people, uh, so many like states had their like registrations early because of Corona and stuff, they don't want people to like, like come in at the last second, right? Because that's, you're going to cause an outbreak if you do that. But like, because of all that, you, you missed the deadline, you're already out of it. So I don't know. It's, 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 it's tough getting people out to vote because there's also, there's apathy, right? And yeah, like there's, there's apathy. And there's also, like, just not being able to do it. And then there was, like, I was watching some, like, okay, this was a while ago. There was people who were who ha were forced or discouraged from voting, like, because their lines would take them into 2, 3 a.m. in the next morning. They get there 7, they get there, like, um, 12, like, in the noon or something, or maybe later afternoon, and they're waiting for uh, five, six hours just to vote and a lot of them uh were strong about it they uh, i mean they they really like stood there and like took the shit and they left right but um, for most people they can't just drop six or seven hours especially like the people in the lower income brackets you know they, every yeah. hour is money every hour is work you you can't you can't do that dude you're smart you're a smart man okay so so like how how do you think in your opinion, like, how do you think that things, how do we help to move things in the right direction now in this country? Like, what, what are your, have you thought about that? Well, I've, in my classes, because I am still a senior in uh, high school, right? Great. So I was, uh, we were, the, but keep in mind, I'm in one of the richest counties in America. There are a lot of people here that are like me. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> like, like my friend Isa Abdul Rahman, he's telling me, he's telling me, and Ke and Kevin Narvaez, he's telling me right now. No, but um, yeah, I'm okay. I know I'm on a call, but they're not telling me anything. This okay. is all. Oh, <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Oh. Nice. Yeah. 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 Okay. Wait. What were, what were we talking about? We were okay. Ta okay. Okay. Well, how are we going to fix this? How are we going to fix this? How yeah, are we going to fix this? Exactly. Okay. Okay. Can you hear me? I can. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, um, it's, you've heard about how, um, for like representatives and uh, like prospective senators, right? When you, when they're trying to run for office, they have these really big obstacles against them. And those obstacles are most of the time, and most importantly, like the monetary ob obstacles. Like, you know how, like, in order to run for a seat in Congress, um, 
it's like they I, I forgot the exact figure, but it's like, like a certain like amount of million dollars yeah, they have for to like, raise like four, and, Oh, sorry. Yeah, I think they have to raise like forty five thousand dollars every day to like make as much money mm -hmm. as, yeah. as, as they can. You know. And of course, yeah, like when you have that sort of restriction, you're going to have a selection bias. The only people that are able to go into Congress are people who are well established, well educated, well like well adjusted, right? They they they're not often representing. Yeah, they're not representing the common man. And I don't know. It's like the the framers of the Constitution kind of wanted that to be the case, right? Because they wanted they were like uh, we wanted property owners to vote at first, and so, right? Like white property owners. And, um, like, they wanted people who were educated as opposed to the common man who might subject themselves to, like, mob rule or, um, what was it, being corrupted by bribes or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. Someone who would, like, who's very idealistic, right? But in doing so, we've kind of created a system where our representatives, most of our people don't un understand what our representatives are doing. Like, my parents... Like my parents are immigrants to this country, so I guess it's, it's kind of different for them because I a lot of the time I have to explain to them what's going on in politics around them. Maybe for like uh, like people that was that have been living here, uh, that might be not the case. But like I feel like it still would be like people aren't really thinking of government all the time, you know? Like they they have lots of other things to do. Yeah, they need to pay and, the bills. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So some and that that also that's also reflected, isn't it like the turnout for like local elections like really low or something? Yes. Like 30, 40 percent or something? Yes, it's bad. Yeah. yeah. So like yeah. yeah, a lot of people just don't understand government on a fundo a fundamental level, right? Their local government. And some most of the time that's what this, like the that's the stuff that actually matters. And a lot of the time, they don't even go for, like, the midterm elections for the Senate and stuff. So, who knows what they're voting for, right? Uh, they yeah. Yeah. Well, they're not yeah. represented accurately. I th wow. So, there's so much stuff to what you're saying. There's so much substance in what you're saying. And I'm, I'm so interested in, like, your story, too. Like, you know, like, your parents are immigrants, and you also live in one of the richest school districts in America— and, and like, I'm so interested in like whatever kind of, I'd be interested in hearing your story about that and like what your experience has been there, because I don't think I, that I've talked to someone who's had that kind of experience on here. And I think it's important for people to hear that perspective. Like, is there, are there things or stories that you, you would like to share that you think are important about your experience that others could get something from? I mean, there's not much to my story. Like, my parents were just, like, pretty smart for where they were coming from, right? So they, they worked their ass off. They, they went from India, and they went to work in the Gulf states, right? They went to work in Kuwait. A lot of Indians do that, right? So they go around, um, if they're not going to America or whatever, or Australia or Canada, or even, like, Ireland and stuff, or the UK, they go to the Gulf states. And then my parents went there. And then my dad, like, networked and got himself a job in America. And so he landed a job. My mom um, also applied for, like, a visa and stuff, right? And they come over. Um, I was actually born overseas, right, in, uh, in the Middle East. And so I'm, I'm brought with them. And, like, they're, they're really smart people. They, they know what they're doing. They're really strong-willed people, you know? When, when you have, like, an immigrant coming to a new country, that's, like, that's, of course, that's hard. So they, they got through it, right? Um, I don't know if I've inherited that will or whatever, but I'm just, I'm just chilling. You're I'm working just, on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or yeah. you're just being, you but, know, yeah, being yourself. You know, it seems like you're a creative guy, too, you know? Like, part, like I feel like a creativeness coming from you. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah I guess. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, um, and then, so, yeah, we settled here. Um I'm not gonna say like I I was never I was never exactly like poor or whatever, but I definitely started off in in America. We started off as lower middle class, right? But um, so that's like where uh, we have like a family of four living in like a two bedroom apartment and shit. 
um, the shit that place is like full of cockroaches. You know, uh, like that's that's. I'm not I'm not gonna say that I'm I'm living in poverty or whatever, but that's like that that's that's kind of a common thing. You know, like a lot of people relate to that. But um, my my dad and my mom earned enough so that now we can have this big ass house, right? Uh, uh, I mean, there is still kind of in debt, but that's fine. It's fine. It's fine. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We could, we could, we don't have to talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah, so now, you know, I'm here and wow. yeah, that's just how it worked out. Wow. So like in like, uh, you know, like a big, a big topic these days is the, uh, the idea of diversity and what that means. Um, and, uh, as a man who is, you know, is, would be considered, you know, a person of color, like what has your experience been in, uh, in a place that is you know, viewed as one of the richest districts in the country and is, do you, what is your definition of diversity? Um, and does it conflict with the kind of general zeitgeist of what it means in, in your environment? Uh, okay, so um, I, okay here, it's already pretty diverse, right? So I live right outside, so the the county outside of Washington D.C., right? So I live in Virginia, and um, there's already a lot of people around here, right? Like my home, like town, uh, is filled with like oh fuck, my headphones came up. Okay, yeah. Um, so my hometown is like. <laughs> My hometown and my, uh, yeah, my hometown and my, uh, <laughs> you're like muting school. me, I can tell. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know that. I know no, that. No, no, no. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, my hometown and my, uh, high school, um, have like significant populations of the Korean people, right? Oh. So that's, that's, that's something that you don't see all the time, right? Um, a lot of Asians here, a lot of maybe, Maybe like a couple towns down, there's like a lot of Indians, which that that is what I am, uh, and uh, yeah, and uh, I don't know. For me, I'm I'm basically I'm I just go through my high school shit like as any other student would be, right? And plus, my name is like I'm I have a really white name. Like my name is Aaron Alexander, right? So like yeah. And I, I, I also like, t like, I don't know the way I come off. A lot of my friends say I'm what, like whitewashed. So interesting. Well, what do you, what do you what think? You do? What you do? Well, that, well, that's interesting, right? Because that, that's something that we don't really hear much about is like a person who would be considered a person of color just by their appearance, but like, and then other people telling them that they're whitewashed. But like, what do you think? Like, like, are you? What do you think about that? Because isn't that a, isn't that a oppression? Like, doesn't that get tiring or sickening or something? I don't know. Um, what? So uh, you so you asked um, what about what do I feel about people saying I'm whitewash? Yeah, and do you believe it? Or what do you think? Okay, so I'm my friends. Uh, so that's more like a joke, right? Between me and my friends. Okay. Like, uh, I am, I am definitely, so like the way I talk and stuff, right? The way I carry myself away, like what I'm interested in and shit, right? Like, I don't like, I guess a lot of, uh, a lot of my friends go to like these cultural events and stuff, right? And I, I, I go to them too, just not as frequently, right? So like they poke fun at me and they're like, oh, you're whitewashed or whatever, right? But I think, yeah, there's, there's kind of a problem. I was I was like reading, we had to read something for English about this, about this uh, guy. Um, his parents were illegal immigrants, right? And he was like an illegal. It was like a citizen baby, so he was he was born in here when his parents. Um, so he was a citizen, and his parents were illegal, and um, like he was talking about how his culture like conflicts, right? So the more time you spend in a culture that's not like really yours, the more, you know, oh, assimilated you are to that culture, right? Right. So I don't know. I try, I try to keep on to my 
Indianness by listening to like like Indian music, um, movies, uh, and my parents have me like. So we also go to like this Indian church. So like yeah, right. so that's so then, cool. So are yeah. you are you cr- like uh, are you talking about like uh, like Indian churches and like your Christian or Indian churches as are you Hindu Hindi? No, no. Okay, so yeah, um, in India, the, ma- the majority religion is Hindu, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, so, but at different, since India is a pretty, it's a pretty diverse place, right? A lot of people say that India should not have become one country at all, and actually, it did kind of become three three countries now, right? We have Pakistan. India and Bangladesh, right? Oh, and Nepal and Bhutan or whatever, right? And Sri Lanka, that's six countries already. But even inside uh, India itself, there's like significant differences between the North and the South. And with it comes a lot of cultural differences too. So around the West, like near uh, in like Punjab and uh, near Pakistan and stuff, right? We have a significant concentration of Muslim Muslims, right? And we have Hindus mostly for the rest of it, but there's also minority populations. Like in my state, I live in like the southern most state in India. There's a significant Christian population. That's Tamil, and, right? The Tamil region. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. So I live my that would be like my neighbor, oh, uh, nice. my state's neighbor. So yeah, so so Tamil Nadu is on the west and my state is on the east oh no Tamil Nadu is on the east we're on the west and um yeah I'm Christian uh but there's also like other populations like there's also Cochin Jews so like they've said they say they've been there since before like pre-Christian like merchants coming down from uh Arabia yeah. I mean, just the diversity, the diversity of India is just mind blowing. I mean, just what a melting pot of all of these different religions and cultures. It's crazy. But for, for you, you're saying that you, you are Christian. Yeah. And like, okay, there's, there's also like Christianity was also promoted by the Europeans when they came here. So we had France here, we had Portugal here, we had Britain here, obviously. Um, and so they left their mark by introducing their types of Christianity, but my, my, uh, Christianity, uh, we believe that, so by the time they came here, there was already Christians on, uh, in South India and there had been Christians for, I think the, the guesstimate for the first. So we think that our faith came down from, uh, Persian missionaries, Persian and Syriac missionaries in the 400s, right? So uh, there was there had already been 1,000 years of Christianity in India by the time the uh, uh, Christians from Europe came through. And actually, uh, I, I like to uh, I like thinking about this. But like, uh, like if that's true, right? Then that means there was a Christian population in India before there was Christian populations in big Christian populations in uh, the Nordic countries and uh, Britain. Wow. That's crazy. Dude, see, this is, yeah. this is stuff that people don't ever talk about. I'm so glad that you're talking about it because this is stuff that people would never yeah. learn otherwise. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, uh, there's a bunch of like people, because there's always like always different denominations of right. Christian churches too, right? Yeah. What is your, what is the denomination of your church? So we identify under um, the Syriac Orthodox Church, right? Syriac Orthodox. So, well, I'm just gonna write this out. Oh, uh, we're also called the Jacobite Church. Yeah, uh, Syriac. Oh, sorry. Oh, I see. Hmm. Okay, and um, wow, uh, they're also called the Jacobite Christians. Oh, that's interesting! Wow. So, like for yeah. you, 
Wow. I'm going to have to do some research on that because I'm, you know, I, I grew up Catholic and I've been so interested in, in different religions I've studied. You know, I, as you can see, I love my Taoism. Um, yeah. <laughs> you know, but I'm, I'm a Unitarian Universalist, which says, you know, like everyone is interconnected and um, yeah, it's, it's, that's a young baby church compared to, you know, the, one of the ancient ones like uh, Zoroastrianism or Christianity, you know, certainly, but, but, mm -hmm. But for you, like now getting into your own relationship with like religion and God, like what do you think? Or do you, do you believe in God? Do you believe in Jesus? Like what, what do you, what do you, what is your personal belief? Um, I don't know. I, so being like growing up in the faith, right? Growing up with the very religious parents, growing up with um, constantly being surrounded by it um these beliefs right i think yeah i think there i would say that i'm pretty stable in my belief that there is a divine power right and i can get behind that as jesus right uh jesus the god and the holy spirit right i can get behind all that um and i i try to read the bible um as much as i can um i i don't know uh, I just don't like getting it shoved down my throat, you know, because like I, I, I even teach at my like church too, right? I'm, I'm like a Sunday school teacher and I, like see, teach songs and hymns and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I do that, but when I go to like, sometimes my parents make me like go to these, these like retreats and stuff. Right. And by the end of it, I'm just in the back roasting like the preacher's <laughs> hair <laughs> i get right. that i get that totally yeah. yeah it's like okay enough is enough yeah yeah like i me and my friends once there, there was this, like a preacher out in the front and i don't know he was he was really animated in the way he was saying stuff and he looked like he was like hopped off of drugs or something right <laughs> so we we're all just like like snickering in the back and then this girl in front of us i guess she wanted to get closer to god acceptable it's respectable right but like she like turned back on us and she got annoyed and she was like you guys are so annoying and then we like called her a bitch and shit <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> i mean it, it is, i mean pe people act differently also like if you're with a group of friends like the, the way that people yeah, yeah. Like, when you're with a group of friends is so different than if you were to just be there alone you know yeah, I mean, <laughs> like, okay, so we, me and my friends, whenever we go to these things, we're like actually menaces to society, right? <laughs> so, so we once, okay, so there was a security guard, uh, there was a, there was this African American uh, security guard on the other side of the, um, the auditorium, right? And um, we all had our rosaries out because uh, like for this thing, this was a Catholic thing, so we all went there. And it was fine. And we all had our rosaries. And then um, uh, we convinced this one kid to take his rosary over to the security guard and have him bless the, security, like, the rosary. <laughs> and he did it. He, he went all the way over there and asked for the security guard. And the security guard just kind of like, he said, I'm, I'm not a priest. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's 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 just just how life goes, and it, it it also gets really really like like preachy after a while. Like, I mean, okay, yeah, preachy. Like they're preachers, yeah. But like, okay, my my parents are so down deep down this rabbit hole. I I think they come from a place where <laughs> my friend just said they come into my face, <laughs> bro. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. My my parents come from this uh, place where they they're very religious. They will do any prayer, right? They will do any prayer. They will do anything, right? They're they're not they're they're not they were not they're not a uh, like. He said they'll suck Jesus' dick. <laughs> they're they're, no, they're not uh, uh, they're not radical. You'd say. Yeah, they're they're not they're not radical. Yeah, they're not radical. Um, but once. I remember this, this was like, I was like in, uh, I think I was 15 or something. 
So it was like a couple years ago. And uh, they took me uh, to this retreat. And they had this, it was almost like astrology, but Christian, right? Mm. So I had to like put my arm out. And he, the dude is like holding my arm. And he's like pl- praying over me. And he's like, he's like telling me what's wrong with me. He's holding my hand, looking into my eyes and telling me what's wrong with me. Right. And I haven't said anything to him. <laughs> and he says, oh, you have two, uh, you have two bad friends. And I was like, oh, okay. I don't, I don't, I don't know what that means. Right. Because like, what? Yeah. And then he starts saying, uh, do you know these bad friends? And I'm like, no, I have, I generally have pretty good relationships with my friends. Right. They're my friends. And he like, I guess they're talking about the quality. So I, I don't, I, I'm, I'm not much of a bad boy. Like I, I don't have any friends that drink smoke. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm a pretty, I'm a pretty, I'm a pretty nice, yeah. good Christian, good Christian boy. Yeah. Yeah. A, a good yeah. Christian with yeah. a good like, sense of humor. Yeah. <laughs> like like the, the, then they said it could be like um it could it could be like a, a bad like act like habits or activities and i guess if it's like porn then okay you got me right like what, what the fuck am i gonna say to that right but um then they said it's two so what's the other one what's the other one right? And, and then, okay, so I was like, okay, this guy's obviously bullshitting. He, he's just, he's just fucking saying whatever he wants to say, right? And, like, I I tell that to my, I like, okay, so I don't say they're bullshitting to my dad. But, like, my dad asked me, oh, what do you think? I was like, what, did you see the same thing I saw? What, what the hell was that? And then my dad was like, okay, yeah, it's it's, it's it was weird, but. I believe he was talking with the Holy Spirit. And I was like, bro, bro, bro. Yeah. And then, and then, yeah. And then there was a, so like, it was a mul- multiple people from my church went to that retreat. Right. So, um, so there was also a girl that was a similar age to me. Right. So I was, I got curious. I asked her, what did she say to you? What did he say to you? Right. And then she said the exact same thing back to me like the two bad friends thing. And then she said that she went even further uh, to tell her parents that they had to keep an eye on her. And I think, I think the only reason why is because she's pretty conventionally attractive, right? Mm-hmm. So I was like, okay, she might get into, she might get into some things. Uh, things get dangerous so with that stuff it's just like yeah like i feel like the the positives of religion are like the community um you know that there is a message of like you know do do good to your you know to your brothers and sisters and and also a lot of the rituals are really like helpful too like they they're comforting in some way but like when it comes to doctrine and like shoving that down your throat like you know the idea that the church says like you know gay people like shouldn't exist there shouldn't be any like um contraception shouldn't exist like what are you doing like get out of the 12th century you know like uh, mm-hmm. yeah i mean yeah I, I i was i heard that at the thing too like um there there was a so okay i i, I might i can just chalk this up to him being a very conservative, um, like Indian, like he, he came from India to preach. So apparently being gay in India is not much of a big thing. Right. So he comes here and he sees, uh, being gay as being a moral degradation of society. And he just starts, um, saying, you know, he starts, he was listing all the problems right in America. And he like, he just keeps on going and then he just like he gets to gay and then he just keeps on going it was just part of his list he was just going down the list right and then i like i hear that i'm i'm like incredulous i'm like okay he just he just acted like that was really obvious and everyone in the crowd like mo- it was mostly like parents and there was like some uh kids because there was like a separate kids session uh uh okay so this is a different retreat right so this retreat i decided to stay with my parents 
and see what like the guy was actually saying instead of whatever the kids retreat guys were saying. So there were a couple other kids and um, my brother was there too, but he can't understand our language. So he wasn't understanding what was going on. So it was like, it was just a moment of just me realizing what he just said. And I look, I look around and everyone else is just like continuing to watch him as if he said something really obvious. And I'm like, Hello? Yeah, there's, yeah, there's no one, yeah. Like, it's, it's weird. Like, I, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not too keen on prosperity preachers, you know? The, like, and that's what some of these people were. Like, they, they come over to you, they put some holy water on your head, they, they, like, slap your, like, forehead with something, <laughs> and then they, they like... <laughs> Yeah, the, and yeah, 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 exactly, exactly like that. And then they try to make you fall, right? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, exactly. You're you're laughing because you haven't seen this in person, man. It's it's I, it's it's ritualistic. It's like like uh, like for me, I watch like I watch this stuff, and every single time I went. So the first time I went, I was I was a pretty impressionable, like thirteen year old, right? So I go in, and it looked like everyone's falling, and then. Um, I, I, I just choose to fall. Right. I just go with the crowd. Right. And then like later on, I'm like, okay, did like the Holy spirit make me fall? Or was that just them getting like shifting my balance a bit? You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, right. Yeah. I mean, that, that's such a, that's such a question that a person of faith would ask, like, is it physics or is it the Holy spirit? Like it's, it is. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, and then, and then and then I was like, okay, let's let's play a game, right? Okay, if uh, it shouldn't shouldn't the Holy Spirit be more all encompassing than my sense of balance, right? Mm -hmm. So for the rest of the uh, times that I go there, whenever they try to do that, I just like I just like come back, right? <laughs> and they they're fine with that. They they just say, oh, maybe you weren't praying enough. Oh. Maybe like making, they're like kind of gaslighting you, but not to like make you feel crazy, but just not faithful enough. That's not, that's, that's actually a ritual in your church? That's not a ritual in my church. That, no, that is, that is definitely not a ritual in my church. That is um, like the preachers at the retreats. Oh, at the retreats, at the retreats. I, I, at the retreats. Yeah, I, I like, I like, I like my church. My church is cool. We have normal masses. I love I love the songs. They're all, they're very meaningful. They um, I, I love I love everything about it. Uh, I love going into the churches. I think it's beautiful. Um, yeah, but these prosperity preachers are not it. Yeah, it's these kind of uh, these retreats that kind of tend to skirt the line a little more. And the community, the church that you go to, is is one that you feel like provides support for you and. Also, music is uplifting. That's great. Well, that's great. I feel like that's what that's what ch that's such a, an important function of church is to a place that reminds you of kind of like your north star, um, and also a place that just makes you want to be a better person after you leave. You know, like mm -hmm. yeah, I, I know. Like, um, and okay, it also gets uh, kids like thinking a, a lot of times. Um, my dad, like whenever he took me, uh, to the church, it would always, at first it would just be me. I would, so our church ceremonies are like, it's always like three hours long or something. Right. So it's like, uh, nine. So, uh, um, well not three hours, maybe like two and a half hours, so like 1130. Right. And for most of that time, I'm like standing up. So I like, at, ever since I was a kid, I just like, remember just like being in the front like almost going to sleep, like just like almost like like d doing the. And my dad is like at the back, and he's like like pinching me, right, or like like hitting me in the back to like get me to stay up. And like it's just it it taught me like so much discipline, right? Mm -hmm. Like like they they make like they make all the kids like go to the front and stuff. And if so, my dad 
was one of the dads that like my so my dad like this is something that happens in immigrant families right a lot a lot right so if you're being a bad child your father your father will hit you your father and mother will hit you right they're, they're they're not like my my parents never like took out a belt or anything but they might take um they might take like an old spatula or something right uh-huh. and just like throw like a ruler or something and then if you're being a bad kid, they'll like hit you like once or twice, right? Of course, they can't do that at the church, so they like re- resort to like pinching or like just like little slaps or whatever. But I don't know that that kept me in line as a kid. And I don't know. Sometimes I see like people around me my age that they don't look like they got that same treatment <laughs> as a kid. They have it, like it, it, it's it's so. Yeah, yeah, and maybe, oh, yeah, my friend just said, maybe it's because of that treatment that they feel like that. I don't know, some people, I guess, maybe I'm just a pussy that just, like, doesn't re- rebel or whatever, mm. but I don't know. They, I've, like, my dad also um, stood at the front and made sure the other kids weren't um, misbehaving, too. So it, w- it wasn't just me. Like, he, he was a menace to us. <laughs> you know, <laughs> wow, that's interesting. Like, I, I, I'm, I'm so interested in your idea of like, you know, wondering if you're a, a, a thief, not rebelling because of that. And is that something that you think about much? Like uh, this idea of rebellion, or, or that you wish that you could rebel more? Um. I won't lie and tell you that I haven't thought about it, but I've always like, I've always thought what they're saying is for my betterment, right? They've lived a longer life than me. They understand what's better for me. And sure, they might have not like lived in the same time period or uh, the same like circumstances that I live in, but what they're saying has value yeah right i'm not gonna like go to my mom or dad and be like fuck me mom (laughs) yeah absolutely yeah yeah like if you look at your parents life like they have made choices that have led you to right now and where you and they are right now is in a pretty decent life you know so like why wouldn't you choose to trust them more often than not and also they're your parents and you know like your idea of what love is is also tied to their behavior with you. So, uh, you know, mm-hmm. there's, there's a lot of stuff kind of reinforcing, being reinforced there. And it, it just it makes sense, you know. And Wow. Dude, this is like, I got to, uh, yeah, I have to tell you, like, uh, you're a pretty cool guy. And I have appreciated the candor and honesty and openness that you've had. Like, it's such a, it, yeah. it's a gift is what it is. It's a real gift. Um so before we get going, are there any kind of last, um, any last thoughts or things that you wanted to bring up? And that now that you you've warmed up and that you know, like you're you're an open vessel now, I can sense in in a, in a way. Like, um, is there something that you'd like to share with with people? One last thought. One last thoughts. Or series of thoughts. It doesn't have to be just one. Uh, hit up my snap. <laughs> yeah, it, put it on. Aaron Todd Alexander. <laughs> <laughs> Shameless self-promotion moment. Okay. Yeah, dude. yeah, type it in. Type yeah, it in. It. People will see it. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. You know, if, if, if you want to, if you want to, you could, uh, you could just like cut off my all of, all the stuff before and leave this just this part. <laughs> dude, this is oh, dude, this is this, people people really. Oh, okay, okay. My my sister my, my sister, my, my friend wants wants her to like meme account to be plugged. I'm, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Okay, put it on there. Yeah. And for everyone watching, for you and for all your friends watching, uh, make sure to subscribe to Building Underscore Bridges. Um, I do this. I have conversations with strangers from all over the world, 33 different countries and over 35 different states. So, um, yeah, thank you so much. Um, 
Aaron, for your time. And uh, yeah, that's great. That was beautiful. Yeah, thanks, man. Well, what's what's your what's your name, man? Yeah. Oh, that's right. You don't even know my name. <laughs> this is what happens. Um, yeah. So I'm Kenny. My name is Kenny. Uh, I'm. Um, uh, that's, that's a thick ass name. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I am. Uh, I I'm an actor, but I also I also really care about. Um, I also really care about like bringing people together in this time because things are going to shit. And, um, and I think that the way to, to, to I don't know, f start to fix things is by listening to other people and by bringing people together in one place. And uh, I think this is exactly what I need to do um, for now, you know? So it's little by little, person by person, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, and you pick the right platform to me on, man. The most broken ass people in the world come on Omega, bro. Yeah. Mm. No, don't mm. don't say that you're broken, though. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I'm, 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 not, I'm not. I'm of course, of course, I'm not broken. I'm <laughs> okay. not, no, I'm fine. I'm pretty secure in that. I'm pretty. Secure. Yeah. I'll, I'll be everywhere else. No, no, no. no. But, but um, but it's true though. Well, like, like this is this is literally the wild west of social media. Like, this is the wild west. So. Like people are willing to talk, and you get so you get people from all over the world. You know, like there are eighty two thousand here wanting to talk. You know, so uh, yeah, I, I met a neo Nazi on you, and uh, oh yeah, he had a he had a like a bloodstained Nazi like uh, this thing, whatever that thing's yeah, armband. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 and like he called me the N word. And he said he'd like to like kill all my family or whatever. And I just got like <laughs> I just I was I was egging him on, right? I was like like hearing what he had to say. So I got him talking for like 10, 15 minutes before he finally skipped. But yeah, or I think I skipped. I skipped. I skipped. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it was scary after, but yeah. Yeah. What was that like? What could, could you? Yeah. Like what? What was he saying? Like, do, did he say anything of actual substance, or was he just like very like angry, hearted? Yeah, yeah. He said he was streaming to a bunch of people. Um, he was like pretty hateful. Like I'm not. I'm. I. I've never really like, like had like a phobia of anything. I've. I'm, I'm, I might be scared of something, right? But I've never like. I don't. I've never like. I don't have. I don't go around saying I have arachnophobia or I hate the dark or whatever, right? Like those things. Like those things are pretty okay. But like. I don't know. I felt like genuine fear in that moment when, like, he was talking. Like the first couple of minutes, I was incredulous, and it was funny, right? Mm. It was funny. It was like he was saying slurs left and right. Like my in my primal brain, I was like, "Oh, offensive, funny." Yeah. Right. Totally. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah, totally. In your world, it's like so absurd that that would ever really happen. But like people actually say that seriously. And then he kept on going, and he kept on like he like. I think the turning point was when he showed me that armband, and I was like, "Oh, okay." Like he he probably has like a you know Ku Klux Klan like robe in his closet or whatever you know, like like I genuinely I felt fear. I was like, "Okay, I fear for my life," even though I didn't really have to fear for my life, you know, because this is Omega. Yeah, but it's also a snapshot of like other people in the world, you know, like mm -hmm. we're really only as strong as our weakest link. And when that's a weak link, you're thinking, what the fuck? How did someone have that much trauma that they hate so much that they're that angry? Like, I mean, I will, I will never go in to the uh, interior of America. I have, I've like decided, I've decided that. Right, I will like the places where I'm going is gonna be either like urban, like a city or whatever, or just like suburbia. Right, mm. the minute you get like, I feel like the minute you get into these like uh, rural areas, and I'm I'm kind of like, I'm I'm demonizing them right now. Right, I'm demonizing the rural areas right now. Mm. But but I I legitimately have a reason to be scared. I think right? it's understandable. I think it's absolutely understandable. I think that you know, like I mean. It's absolutely fair. Like I am a white guy. I am straight. 
I mean, I'm, I'm complicated, but I, I'm passing straight. Um, you know, and, but, but, and so I'm obviously extremely privileged and, and very lucky to be where I am right now. I've been dealt a hand of cards that, you know, um, you know, but, but I, th- sure. like, I think that part of the reason that things are so shitty today is that people from different parts of the world are segregated and isolated from each other. And it, like we need to take personal responsibility to listen to other people. Now, I'm not saying that – I'm not saying to go and like hang out with a neo-Nazi, you know, because there is a limit. But there are also people who are on the edge who are willing to listen, but people don't give them the time of day because they label themselves as a Republican or a conservative or, uh, you know – someone that in our in our culture is like opposite of us so it's like oh they're the other so let's just stay with our tribe you know and and that tribalism um i think is the thing that's tearing us apart and we need to have courage and take responsibility and listen to other people from from different points of view as often as possible like i think that's i think that's the glue that's starting to erode now, uh, basically because of social media algorithms and stuff like that. Um, but um, mm-hmm. anyway, that's my that's my rambling on that. But I, I mean, it's like it's awesome that you were able to have the patience to to sit with him for that long and and uh, you know, I had my boys on the Discord call with me, so. <laughs> If if I was on my own, I don't think I would have survived that long <laughs> on the thing. Yeah, jeez. Uh, well, Aaron, I I think uh, I'm gonna get running, but I but I want to. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, what was that? Uh, uh, well, my okay. So my friend wanted to ask you what's what's your opinions on Palestine. Oh. <laughs> oh wow. Uh well oh yeah okay let me let me okay well. First, I just want to also shout out this this um, organization called Represent Us that is kind of deals with mm-hmm. anti-corruption legislation, which I think is uh, also one way a way that we can move forward with things um, mm-hmm. politically and otherwise. Oh, the Palestinian the Israeli Palestinian crisis. What are my thoughts of it? Um, that's so general, and it's I mean it's so complicated. Um, I mean, I, I, I think that um, I think that I mean, there's so much to talk about. Like, do, do we want to talk about like the formation of Israel after World War II in the first place? Like, is that something we want to talk about? Because that was obviously fucked up. It was that was a colonial kind of you know it was it was wasn't kind of it was a colonial thing where like. The winners of the war were just like, we're going to put Israel here and fuck all of you. That's what we're doing. And then it just descended that whole – it was it was a plot to get a foothold in the Middle East to be able to get more resources um, if you look at it like as an economic tactic. Um, now yes. – oh, go for it. I guess uh, what he wants to say is uh, – I think I'm speaking for him right now. He's to tell me from saying – yeah, right, right. So um, I think the he's talking about solution kind of uh, the two state solution. Is is that what you want, Isa? Is that what you want? Yeah, be honest. Be honest. Yeah, be honest. Be honest. He, okay. Okay. So I'm yeah. Um, so it's 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 troubling how like the a lot of the West right and like the U, uh, U.S. have a hard time like denouncing Israel for they're almost like borderline like war crimes against Palestinian people. And so Isa is like um, like idea like ideally. He like he's like seen so much like damage done to people that look a lot like him, right? 
and he's like, okay, I kind of want Palestine to take that like land back. But he says that I guess the two state solution is a better idea. But the two state solution is what we've had for a while, right? Oh, well, Palestine is not a state right now. Palestine is there's there's nothing. Palestine is just um, like a it, it's not there. It's there's the Palestinian Liberation Organization. Um, which, um, like Yasser, Yasser Arafat was the head of it for a while. I think he's dead now. But like that, that's an organization that's trying to bring Palestine back. So right now there's just Israel. But I think, I think you know, I talked to this woman. Uh, I talked, I forget who I, I talked to a lot of people. But like I was talking to someone and they were saying it's really, it's really the state, the people in power in Israel versus the people in power in the PLO that are the people that are creating such destruction. The majority, like the set, like 70% of like all the people in Israel and all the people like in the surrounding area in the West Bank and all the places that would be Palestine if Israel weren't there are just wanting peace. They're just like, give us peace. But the leadership of both organizations just want power. And so they're the ones that we need to figure out how to maneuver around or take down or – I mean take down is not – is would not be the solution. But like how do you confront them? How do you confront those people? And if you confront them on a national stage and like speak truth to it, and pressure them so that that's I think a way to move forward now I, I don't know a lot of particulars but I think that you know if you kind of speak truth to power in that in that way especially if you're in power in America and have a lot of money then you can start making moves there that's my thought of it I don't know in a perfect world like America and like other like Russia and like, I guess, I guess Turkey's a little bit closer, but um, like outside powers in that like area should, should not really be having like the power to influence how everyone acts because since US, the, since the US supports Israel and shit like that, right? Like if, if they were to leave, now that it, the US has established itself as a power in the Middle East, right? Right, so like now Israel has a backer, right? And the other um, countries all kind of like stay together so that they're like protected from the U.S., right? Yeah. And so if the U.S. leaves now, uh, we can see a significant like change in like that power dynamic. And we already saw what happened with Iraq when the U.S. left um, and then ISIS and stuff. Mm. But arguably, I don't know. ISIS was definitely a big problem. But I've heard they're they've pretty much sputtered out now, right? Yeah, I, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure that they've kind of dissolved. Um, mm. Yeah, um, I was just think uh, I had a, another thought about this that um, that like if oh, I had a thought and then it it, it left. I'm gonna have to write about it. I'll talk to Mary. I'll talk to Mary. I'll talk to Mary. Okay. So we were talking about the U.S. in the Middle East, like the the um, all the connections between the Middle Eastern countries and the U.S. backing Israel, and yeah, how it's, it's our violence. Yeah, it definitely has something to do with with Israel uh, and Palestine. Um, oh, Something with oh something with like a the block of the block of uh, different countries over there. Um, shit, nah, yeah, it, it's it's gone. Yeah, yeah which sucks. But um, maybe maybe when I do a reflection video the next time, um, I'll, I'll talk I'll talk about it because yeah, I mean this has just been such a fruitful conversation. I've learned so much, and thanks so much to, uh, to your friend too who asked the question. Yeah. yeah. You have a good, he is, sounds like you have a cool group of friends. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, thanks, man. 
All right, dude. Yeah, so I'm going to upload this video right now. Um, and so you'll be able to see it pop up. In, uh, you'll be able to see it pop up in like 20 minutes, half an hour. Sure, sure, man. Thanks. All right, dude. Hey, take care. Hey, thank you. I'm on my way to see tits and ass. <laughs> Great. Enjoy. <laughs> see ya. Oh, man. Dude, cool. Yeah, the different... What was I thinking about with, uh, with Israel and Palestine? Man, I wish that I was just able to write down that thought. Huh. Well, whenever it comes up. Awesome, Aaron. Thank you again for just a great conversation.